listening to a Weeby Geeks Network podcast. The Dining at Disney podcast. The Dining at Disney podcast. You know the thing about good food? It brings folks together from all walks of life. Your ultimate source for the wonderful world of dining at the Disneyland and Walt Disney World Resort. If you are what you eat, then I only want to eat the good stuff. Kristen and Bubba are your guides on this culinary adventure. People are going to line up for miles around just to get a taste of my food. Our food. <laughs> Join them as they discuss the latest food news, expert tips, recommendations, and trip planning advice as it relates to Disney dining. Try the gray stuff. It's delicious. Don't believe me? Ask the dishes. From quick service to fine dining, you'll discover all the best restaurants and food as you hungrily explore the Disney parks. Let's do this thing! The Dining at Disney Podcast. And now your hosts, Kristen and Bubba. Welcome to another episode of the Dining at Disney Podcast, your ultimate source for delicious discussion about dining at Disneyland and Disney World. I'm your host, Kristen. With me is former cast member and ultimate foodie, Big Bubba B. <laughs> Thank you. Ultimate foodie. Ultimate food foodie. Like How you doing, Bubba? Mucho excellent. I'm doing great out here in California. Perfect weather I, today. Oh, and we have nice weather too. Oh. Nice and sunny, no clouds, comfortable temperature. Always makes me happy. Yeah, love this that. is Cal. I know you gotta love California in spring. It's been beautiful the past couple of weeks here. You guys, for the most part, though, have beautiful weather. Yeah, we don't. We don't really have seasons. We just have summer and fall, spring, kind of spring. Yeah, some places have winter, but <laughs> yeah, we just basically have like two seasons. We don't have much of much of a winter, so I really what? can't complain. We get a little bit of winter, but the problem is our, our weather can't decide. One one week it's it'll be seventy. Like in January, you'll actually have a few days of seventy degrees. And then the next day, then it's like, you know, high of thirty two. So you you get kind of I have a feeling though we had a really mild winter except for that one snowstorm that came through yeah. but I, I'm worried it's going to be a really hot summer then and I really am not a big fan of humidity and in the 100 so yeah we're we're going to average about 100 when summer hits here each day yeah I'm I'm not a fan of that at least your humidity is less than ours oh yeah way less way less <laughs> here it's like if you have asthma they tell you like don't don't go outside don't do anything outside <laughs> really yeah even in Nashville huh oh yeah because the humidity gets really high here very our humidity is about the same as what it is in orlando in the summer so it's just like suffocating yeah yeah yeah. well good luck (laughs) (laughs) but enough about the weather we've got a lot of news to uh discuss which just you know came out past couple days of course we've got the disney uh california adventure food and wine festival the full menus to discuss today as well as uh the disney after hours that they have launched at magic kingdom or will be launching i should say and a couple of events that will be taking place over at disney's animal kingdom our main discussion today is going to be some of our favorite places what we think are the best places to go and get breakfast both in the parks at the resorts maybe in downtown disney or disney springs we're going to be talking about that today but before we get into it we want to thank Thank you for downloading the show on iTunes, streaming it on Stitcher, as well as watching the webcast on YouTube. Be sure to like and subscribe to our feeds and don't forget to share with your friends. For those of you that want to show some support and help us out here, you can do that by shopping our affiliate links. We have the Disney Store Garden Grocer. For those of you that want groceries delivered to your Disney Resort in Orlando, at Jelly Belly. And then the new Epcot Dining Guide has been launched. So you've got that. And then in the fall, we'll have the Food and Wine Festival Dining Guide for uh, for Epcot. So uh, that'll be coming out later this year. But the Epcot Dining Guide guide is available right now and one thing we have set up is a patreon account because you know we've we've had some uh issues with with bubba's mic so we just got bubba a new <laughs> mic uh, all these all these things all of our all the stuff that we do of course we pay out of pocket for that and it, it gets a little expensive and you can help us improve the show because we really do want you to enjoy this and and yeah. find it to be beneficial and give you the sound quality that you absolutely do deserve to have with this show so we're always working to improve things and that yes. patreon account can uh help us out we'll have the links for that as well as like the dining guide and stuff like that in the show notes of course but 
on to the yummy good stuff, our yeah. meal. We're going to kick it off with the appetizers. So, Bubba, we've got the menus being released now for the Food and Wine Festival. Yes, and it looks, oh, it looks so delicious. And I couldn't stop reading. It's like I was reading a novel about everything that they were having. <laughs> So let's get ready for this. April 1st. I'm ready. Food and Wine, ready food and wine make- Festival. Disney California Adventure. Thank you so Just much days for bringing away. it back once again. Yes, days away. So um, make sure you're planning a trip to uh, take out there in April, especially during the week- weekend when all the big events happen. So uh, you're not going to want to miss, any- miss anything. Informative seminars, culinary demonstrations, appearances from celebrity chefs like Graham Elliott from uh, MasterChef, uh, Guy Fieri from Food Network's Diners, Drive-Ins, and dives. Also, Andrew Sutton, who is Disneyland Resort's very personal sh- uh, own chef. He does great creations. Uh, Kristen definitely knows about him. Um, in fact, you've talked to him a couple of times, haven't you? I have not, unfortunately. Oh, you haven't? I, I have thought not. you had. Oh. No. no. Oh, I would once. love to. I, I just met him to. briefly. Um, he was very busy when we uh, met him the opening day of uh, Buena Vista Street and Carte Circle, when we went oh, to I dine bet. at Carte Circle. And it was very briefly, it was very hectic that day. We could only get a lunch reservation. All dinner was completely booked that day. But uh, definitely one of my best uh, restaurants was Carte Circle. And We need to get him on the show. Yeah, you definitely, we definitely should i'll see if i could uh talk to him maybe next time i'm down in the park hopefully i can because he's always scattered around he's either at napa or at carte circle or um doing something exquisite around the park but um yeah you're not going to want to miss any of these uh this food menu just came out that disney is offering in these special festival marketplaces and uh they're going to showcase the region's diversity of California food and wine, as well as separate festival-inspired menus across California, um, California Adventures. So we have eight stations, so we're going to go through each of them and what they have to offer. Uh, we have the LA-style Marketplace Station. They will have a chilled ahi uh, poke with avocado cream and wakame salad topped with sesame tuile and a pork belly uh, bow taco with pickled vegetables and for dessert, a milk chocolate caramel tart with almond brittle and sea salt that that right there had me uh <laughs> you had me you have to try it. do you like do you like sushi i'm i've tried it once and i wasn't a big fan but I was gonna say, i'm the, always the wanting ahi, to try it the ahi tuna pokey it looks similar to the one that they do um at disney world it's worth trying. It is. The, I, yours has avocado cream, but I'm like, oh, see, they don't put that on ours, and that looks really good. When we did the avocado festival years ago, actually, I did have, yes, that was the second time I had it, and that was delicious. That I remember. Um, and I think it was ahi with the avocado cream. Oh, so so I want to go back to my pictures. I know I have pictures in the menu of it, so I'm going to look at that. And, um, yeah, the taco, um, I'm going to try the dessert. Hopefully, uh, that'll be around when I go there. I don't know when I'm going to go. Go. I'm hoping to go sometime early April so I don't miss anything because later during the month they might have stuff that's uh, that'll be done so who knows. Uh, the vineyard will have plenty of wine for you to drink Cabernet, Chardonnay, Pinot Noir flights and wine and, uh, and cuvee by the glass wine country of course more wine they'll have a Zinfandel oh actually no this one they'll have a different uh, inspired wine inspired on um, uh, eats. Let's put it that way. Zinfandel braised wag- wagyu. <laughs> I was trying to look up the definition of this word. I couldn't really find it, but it's um it's a beef with uh, creamy polenta and spring pea puree. Roasted y- yellow beets and hazel goat cheese will also be available with baby greens, green ver- and like a, basically a pale grape um, with cashews. And then also for dessert, a blackberry tart with rosemary, vanilla bean, cream fraiche, and Cabernet wine glaze or cream fresh as yeah. we say it here. As we say it here. <laughs> and uh, so go ahead. Oh, I thought you were going to say something. No, but all that sounds good. Yes. Mm. Uh, Viva Fresca. They will have fried shrimp tacos, soft tacos with pickled red onion, jalapeno, queso fresco, and avocado lime cream. They will have I want Anaheim. some of that right now. That, that, that sounds that, delicious. So oh that God. sounds probably one. That, that'll be my pick with the Viva Fresca. They're only having two offerings at this one. That and the Anaheim Chili Roasted Cauliflower Burrito. That's good if you're not a big meat eater. 
That's actually kind of uh, Veget- you know, veget- nice vegetarian. Yeah, dish. Vegetarian bre- has jack cheese and avocado lime uh, cream with that also. The Gold Rush booth will have a triple cheese mac with smoked chicken featuring fontina, cheddar, and gouda cheeses. And an avocado chip with spicy aioli. So avocado chips. I've never, or artichoke, sorry. I've never had artichoke chips. I heard they were pretty good. I like raw avocado, all cooked, but I've never had it chipped, wise, or fried. I haven't either. I bet it's yeah. pretty good, though. I hope not. I'm going to try. I think I'll try that one. But this one caught my eye in a big way. This apple bacon whoopie pie with maple cream cheese icing and bacon brittle. You had me. I mean, I don't even know what bacon brittle is. I've never heard of that before, but I definitely want to try this one right i was hoping oh my gosh i'm like why why can't i get that (laughs) that sounds so good (laughs) there will be uh of course the brew house will have samples of beer from northern and southern california and different craft beers the farm is going to feature grilled beef tenderloin sliders with the chimichurri sauce golden thai vegetable curry with jasmine rice and a mare lemon if you haven't had one it's like a cross between a lemon and an orange so um it's got that sweetness yet the sourness that you'll like. Um, that's with the macaroon and blueberry marmalade. And uh, oh, of course, the wow. mare lemon cream and dried blueberry dust on top of that. So this will be at, that'll be available at the farm marketplace. And the final one is by the bay. This one is probably the best one I've seen out of all of these. They have a white cheddar ale and bacon soup served in a Bodine sourdough mini bowl, a chilled shrimp and snow crab cocktail, and a coconut tapioca layered, um, layered with fresh mangoes. Um, I believe they have boba on top of that, topped with the green tea micro sponge. <laughs> wow, this is elegant. And a mango coolie and sesame t- uh, twill on top of that. So that and that's the by the bay marketplace. Now these will be scattered, um, I believe, around Disney California. I don't believe they'll have it in just one section. They'll be scattered all around the park. But each of these do have a price. There's no price set yet, but you're gonna average from five dollars to fifteen dollars maybe for each item or or tasting whatever you decide to do. If you do the beer flights or um, if you want to eat something. So uh, like I said, nothing. I wish it was free. I wish everything was just like a little bite size uh, <laughs> sample. I'd be there forever uh so so like i said average around five to fifteen dollars make sure you go with a f- empty stomach and just ready to try these amazing flavors of food that you're going to be tasting from uh these disney sh- disney chefs and chefs from all around california the ones did you see that some of the restaurants are going to be having specialty <laughs> items as well that i could good. not question about that i could not find anything really to see that let me I pulled my notes up and I could not find anything on that. So I'm going to double check. I've got it posted on the site. Sorry. I like the fact that at Carthay Circle, they're going to have a different specialty item each week. And it's going to have a wine pairing with it. I'm like, that's pretty cool. There we go. Excuse me. Okay. So with, um, oh, it was right below it. Uh, Carthay Circle. (laughs) Yeah. So, um. Nothing's really listed for the, you know, specialty menu. They do have certain things like the Carthay Cobb salad, the Caribbean club sandwich at Carthay. So in the inside the lounge where we have ate and drank before, we've actually recorded a show in there, too. <laughs> uh, That's me, true. Me. We did WDW yeah. Tiki Room there. And the, it's a nice spot to hang out, too, if you just want to take 10, 15 minutes, sit down, have a drink. It's a perfect place, the Carthay Circle Lounge. Um, the Pacific Wharf Cafe, one of my favorite places to eat inside California Adventures. We'll have a Dungeness Crab chowder uh corn chowder bread bowl the bread bowls are one of my favorite things in the park it's filling it's not too pricey in my opinion and you know you won't once you eat that for the rest of the day <laughs> so you'll so you'll definitely save money cocina cucamonga mexican grill these are all located in the pacific wharf area um or the uh yeah pacific wharf uh, there's a nice little brew place called uh uh the, carl strauss <laughs> carl strauss thank you carl strauss brewing truck my we know i brewer. never i never miss getting a beer there you know yeah she doesn't you don't miss getting a beer or a glass of wine anywhere actually <laughs> that's what i like about you uh but they will have a shredded pork tostado with grilled pineapple slaw and chipotle cream wow that made that my stomach skipped a beat right there lucky fortune (laughs) cookery chicken and vegetable dumplings will be offered at that location wine country they'll have a fresh strawberry and pistachio cream tart paired with the feature wine 
Um, and so yeah, the Sonoma, like- yes, uh, I'm not big on pistachio cream. I've never had that. I I don't like pistachio ice cream. Act, so I'm hoping. Oh, you probably like- won't like that. Yeah. See, I it's like milder. pistachios. Oh, it's it a milder taste. Usually pistachio cream is much milder, but see, I, and that's what always disappoints me about because I like pistachio ice cream. Really? I've tried it once. I couldn't get the, get the hang of the flavor. I don't know why. I love pistachios. I just didn't like the ice cream. That's at wine country. This, uh, Sonoma Terrence and the Hollywood Backlot Studio Bars will feature sausage and cheese plates, uh, also fruit and cheese plates. Hollywood Backlot Studio, that will have a soft twisted pretzel with cream sauce, fruit and cheese plates, and sausage cheese plates. So as you're making your way around the park, I'm sure everything will be listed uh, about what they're going to have to offer. And there's going to be something at every turn, which is going to be great about this festival. You're, I mean, so you'll have your options of plenty to eat. If you don't, you're I don't know what's wrong with you. <laughs> <laughs> I like the fact it's Sonoma Terrace. I can go up there, get some wine, and then have a sausage and cheese plate. I love sausage and cheese and fruit plates. They make me so happy. <laughs> I just sit there. To me, it's just... it's well, Especially with the glass of wine, the, ch- the cheese plates just are so... Yeah. I- I'm not a big cheese eater, only when it comes to Mexican food. But yeah, def- definitely with a glass of wine. And uh, sausage, though, I've never eaten with wine. <laughs> oh, they always usually like that's a that's a big Italian thing. Like when you it is. when when I've gone to Italy, they start off with the uh, one restaurant. They brought a huge basket and it had sausages and cheeses in them. And you just like cut from what you want. And it's oh. it's part of their meal. It's kind of their version of like um like an appetizer. You start off with that, oh. but oh, they're so good. And of course, everybody's drinking wine. Yeah, but it's like one of those things that to me, I just I guess maybe because of having been there, I associate sausage and cheese and crackers and wine as being something where you just it's it's a relaxing thing. Like you just sit there, you relax, you chat. It's nothing. It's not a I need to consume food and and go kind of and thing go, yeah it's uh, take the time to enjoy social yep yeah we've when i worked at a fine dining place um, the cheese and cracker plate was the top seller of course we had fine wine too which we also sold along with it and um i've never been a food cheese wine guy I've, actually i don't think i've sat down and enjoyed a full i've had a piece of cheese and a glass of wine but not not the full experience which maybe i should go do when i'm at the park <laughs> You know what? That's what we have to do the next time I'm out there. We'll go yeah. up and and do a wine tasting with a cheese plate and do the whole thing. Do the whole we'll thing. do it right. We'll do it right. Uh, all right, that's a date. So okay, that is a date. So make <laughs> sure when you are when you are at Disney California, bring, like I said, bring your appetite, bring um, bring uh, your wallet too. Like I said, these items will range uh, for the marketplaces five to fifteen dollars. There's no price set on the uh, specialty items for the uh, restaurants, but as soon as we get that, we'll we'll post them up for you so that way you have an idea of uh, of how much everything will be when you go for your week. Yep. Yes. Okay. So over to the East Coast and Walt Disney World. Uh, Plancha, we have talked about this like a, a, oh gosh, maybe it's been over a month now that we discussed uh, Plancha and their Sunday brunch. Yes. But they did some updates to it. And one of the nice things is before the Sunday brunch, it included the buffet, you got your choice of entree, non-alcoholic beverage, um, and then you had your choice of either a Bloody Mary or Mimosa. Well, they, and it was $18 then to add the bottoms. Well, now it's not an additional $18. They're going to include that when you do the nice. Sunday brunch. That's so now for okay. 68, everything is part of that. And I'm like, that makes me very yes. happy to That's see awesome. that. And then they did add some new items to that. So, and, and removed a couple of them. So apparently they didn't taste, um, test as well as they had thought, uh, which is Part of why they did the, the media preview to kind of get an idea of what people thought of it and stuff like that. But they added a um, uh, a Sunday fish now that's going to come with a bean salad and avocado, tropical fruit, salsa and blueberry gastrique. There is the Tranquilo breakfast, which includes two eggs cooked to order, bacon and breakfast potatoes. There's also a churrasco. It's a skirt steak with chimichurri, which I love chimichurri sauce. Yeah. And yucca fries. They also added, uh, they changed the burger. It's now a plancha burger and it's a chorizo and beef patty with Maduro's, white cheddar, lettuce and heirloom tomato. Mm. And I realized that I have a spelling error. (laughs) I put chorizo in beer patty. <laughs> Ooh. So, uh, 
easily fixable. So, and you know what? That would be tasty too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I look at that. I'm like, that actually sounds delicious. <laughs> <laughs> so it's nice that they did the update. However, they did decide to remove the option of just getting the brunch, um, the buffet section. So you either do it a la carte or you do all or of it. All of it. Which to me, I would go with all of it. Oh, yeah. Because the buffet stuff was way too good to like not have that stuff. Oh, I would love to be there one day. Wow. Oh. And Unlimited then, Mimosa and Bloody Marys. That, oh, that's it. That's excellent. So happy they included that with the price. Oh, I can't wait to go back. I bet you can't. <laughs> I'll have another Bloody Mary and uh, another Mimosa, please. Oh, yeah. I'm going to get there when it starts. My plan is going to be to sit there and, and eat and drink for straight four hours and just your, enjoy my Sunday. Get your 68 worth uh-huh. right there. Absolutely. <laughs> Well, we had mentioned before that Deluxe Burger was coming to Disney Springs. And now we have a look at the menu. It includes a barbecue classic burger topped with fried onion rings, smoked gouda, bacon, barbecue sauce, and lettuce. There's a classic burger, which is going to have cheddar, lettuce, tomato, and a pickle. The uh, El Diablo Burger, chorizo and signature blend patty, oh. fried banana peppers, pepper jack cheese, lettuce, tomato, and a chipotle mayo. You know that's going to be good. Oh, I'm looking at the picture right now. I, th- I believe that's the picture of it right there. And yeah, wow. it looks like it is. Oh. And then they have a Southern Classic Burger beef patty topped with a fried green tomato, pimento cheese, lettuce, and bacon. A Cluck Burger, which is going to be a ground chicken patty, garlic herb sauce, avocado, lettuce, and tomato. So for somebody who wants to eat a little bit healthier. Mm-hmm. And a Veggie Burger, which is a house-made patty topped with um, z- tzatziki sauce, uh, green bean salad, lettuce, and tomato. So that sounds good. Yes. And then they're going to have some um, artisanal gelato shakes with rotating flavors that are going to include a vanilla, chocolate, raspberry, strawberry, salted caramel, s'mores, oh. and cake. They'll also have root beer, cherry Coke, and orange soda floats. Like, oh, this sounds so this, good. I know. We're, we're, I need to make a trip down there. This is amazing. <laughs> then for those of us that are 21 and up, we can get mm. a spirited shake, a smoked bourbon, oh, uh, smoked bourbon and beer. And then there's also a Godiva raspberry. Godiva raspberry, that one has my name on it. <laughs> yep. So there will also be what they're calling a red velvet burger macaroon. And these are so cute. Oh, my gosh. Yes, they and are. It's, it looks like a little tiny burger. <laughs> and it's got it the ketchup that's on it is raspberry sauce, of course. But I'm like, oh, my gosh, I so want one of those right now. Because it's, it, it's I'm sure kids are going to love that since it's like. The attention to detail on the macaroon is amazing. They You see little sesames on top of them on top of the macaroon. I'm sure it's not sesame, but the, I mean, the green looks like lettuce, the beef patty. It, I mean, it, it's amazing how they did this. Oh, I know. And the slice of cheese on top or on in the middle. It's just, wow. Good job. <laughs> and it won't be much longer before it opens in May. In May. Oh, you're definitely gonna have to try one of those next time. You, if you, when oh, you I'll be there. I'll be going in May. In I'm going to, you know, I, I always have to start my list of, okay, what, where do I need to go back to and what is new? And I have a checklist and I put it on my phone and that way I can make sure that I check off everything that's my must do food experiences. Your trip bucket list. Right now it's just expensive the past like year and a half because Disney's constantly opening new restaurants and with Disney Springs expanding so much. It's like every trip I've got three new places to eat at. I'm just glad that I have my grandmother's close to their metabol- metabolism because <laughs> if I did not uh, yeah the doctor would be like we need to put you on a diet you can't eat these things anymore oh, oh. <laughs> thank god huh wow Let's see. So over to Disney's Animal Kingdom, there's two new events that are going to be going on over there. Both of them begin starting on April 22nd. The first one is called Harambe Wildlife Party. 
And it's going to be taking place in Harambe, which is the African village. So it's the Africa section of the park. And they're going to have music. There's going to be a Harambe drum circle. They have what's called the Caribou Sisters. And they're re- they resemble regal African cranes. And it's three women. So they're going to be dancing uh, acoustic music as well as acapella songs. And then they have what's called the Soccer Meerkats. And it's going to be soccer players. Oh. And um, it's going to be um, it says entertaining with uh, comic soccer moves inspired by African el- uh, animals and delightfully with skillful acrobatic teamwork and dance. Wow, that's going to be nice. And then the Harambe Village Acrobats, and they're going to have uh, bees, bells, feathers as part of their costumes with African prints. So that should be a lot of fun. Wow. And also going on in the park is going to be uh, what's called Discovery Island Carnival. And it's going to be in a completely different section of the park. Uh, Discovery Island is kind of like the, the center part of the, the park. And they're going to have the Viva Gaia Street Band. And it's going to be island music, larger than life gala celebrating the wonder and beauty of nature. And it's going to start in the late afternoon and it's going to go on uh, for several hours as the sun goes down. So it's all about like, um, you know, dance and and, um, you know, just a lot of fun liveliness. So I the think music's going to be amazing. Fun. Yeah, the music's going to be amazing for that, too. Oh, yeah. I mean, I like, I always picture like music that they have in Disney's Animal Kingdom, like the, the bands that they've had in there. They used to have uh, one that was in this same same area, Discovery Island area, and it was the Village Beatniks. And they were also it's, it was like steel drums and right. and they would sing and dance and had I mean, it was just it was really entertaining and a lot of fun. So <laughs> this should be good. Yeah. And then my last little bit of news is going to be about uh, this little bit came out today and it's causing quite a stir on the Internet because it's about Disney after hours and it's going to be taking place in Magic Kingdom. Well, I guess it's about two years ago. They have when you stay at a, at a Walt Disney World Resort, you get extra magic hours. So you get to stay in the park. It had been three hours after the park closes and it's for resort guests only. Well, they cut it down to two hours. And now they're going to be charging for a new event um, that's going to be taking place. And it's three hours after the park closes. Uh, You're going to have certain attractions, most popular ones like Big Thunder Mountain, Peter Pan's Flight, Space Mountain, Seven Dwarfs Mine Train. Those type of attractions will still be open. And you'll have character meet and greets as well throughout the park. They're going to have, uh, as part of this, ice cream novelties and selected beverages that are going to be in included. If you need to purchase any additional food, they will have uh, Casey's Corner and Starbucks open as well. Um, It's only going to be available to a limited number of guests. And this is not going to be cheap. It's going to be $150 a person. For three hours. For three hours. A park hopper ticket here at Disneyland costs one, maybe one fifty, when about well, around one fifty, and you get the park from nine p.m. to <laughs> midnight or nine a.m. to midnight, basically here. For that, I'm just like, I mean, oh, if you want to do it, you know, if you hate crowds, you hate being around people, this is perfect for you, and I highly suggest that you do this. But just remember that one hundred and fifty can go a long way somewhere else on your Disney trip, in my opinion. Yeah, it says that it's going to be the Disney After Hours tickets is going to be 10 p.m. on April 28th, May 5th, and then 11 p.m. on April 14th, 21st, May 8th, 12th, and 19th. My thing is, at that amount of money, for Al, John, and I to go, that means $300 for both of us to spend three hours in the park with less people. Or for that amount of money, we can go and have a two to three hour dinner at Victoria and Albert's. <laughs> if I have a choice, I'm going with Victoria and Albert's. See, yeah, like I said, it can go somewhere else towards your trip that, you know, it's, that you're wanting to do. You're, you're already going to be in the park during the day. So, I mean, you know, three extra hours like, oh, I got to ride uh, the mine train 20 times. You know, if you need if you have that itch to do it, yes, do it. But you're uh, the one one percent other people want that but uh you know what it's they tried it here at disneyland but they didn't charge it what they did was um for annual pass holders 
you got to stay in the park an extra two to three hours. And um, I thought it was like a little test to see, you know, how many people would stay. And it was busy uh, for those three hours after the park closed. They closed the park at nine. Um, you know, it was either Monday through Thursday and they uh, they kept it open till midnight or 1 a.m. And it was very fairly busy uh, for those three hours. But they never uh, they never did anything after that. So uh, with this, I don't know. Did they ever test anything like this at Magic Kingdom? Like you said, they did this a few years ago. Well, they they always have extra magic hours, mm -hmm. but it's only for two for hours. Two. And it varies from what park. Every, every oh, day, okay. a park either opens an hour early or it stays open two hours later. And it's resort guests only can stay in the park at that point and ride the rides. Uh, your magic bands, they now scan those. And that way they know you you are staying in a Disney resort. You are allowed to get on the rides. And uh, so that happens, but they've never done it where they've added an event like this and charged for it. Um, and this this is for anybody or do you have to stay anybody. at the, anybody? So if you're staying at a Motel 6 or whatever, you can pay the 150 extra and stay for three hours. Yeah. Okay. I just feel that... In that case, well, I guess if you're staying off property and that's, you know, maybe in that sense, it might be to somebody worth it. But I'd rather just go when they do the extra magic hours for the two hours afterwards, because the Magic Kingdom, the extra magic hours, it's not like Epcot where there's a lot of people in the park because most of the people who who go to the park, they've got little ones. And so they're tired and, and they go back. Yeah. Um, so I think you find a lot less uh, uh, people in the in the park for extra magic hours at Magic Kingdom compared to percentage wise at, at some of the other parks, but I'm like go then because yeah. I went. It was ju not this past year, but the year before I went July third um, with Natalie and her son Con, and we went to the park. It was open till three a.m. with extra magic hours. At eleven thirty, we did. We went to the park in two and a half hours. We wrote everything we wanted. Like the longest wait we had, I think was like 15 minutes. And that's for, you know, Space Mountain and all the other attractions that are popular. Everything's, you know, all those are open. And like Pirates, Walk On, Haunted Mansion, just walked on. Because, I mean, and that's one of the busiest times of the year. Wow. And yeah, like I said, if you don't want if you don't want to wait in line, that's the that's the best that's your best. And bet you're not and you're not the staying hours. there. Yeah, but, and you're not staying there. Um, do you have magic morning hours too at Disney World? They that's they have an extra magic hours, yeah, but it uh, it varies at what what park that's going to be, and it's not every not every okay. morning because it could be during slow season where they do evening extra magic hours at one park, but no parks are doing the morning. Okay. It's more likely to have morning than evening. Yeah. Ours is we don't have we have the extra hour for Disney uh Disney guests to then they it, Monday through Friday. Monday through Sunday it just goes Disneyland California Adventures, Disneyland California Adventures for what day you're yeah. staying at the park. So it's just price saving. I can find other ways to spend that money. But that's yeah, I, I know that's uh, three hundred dollars for two people to stay three hours, and uh, it's uh, maybe during the summer. I mean, I know Disneyland's going to be hell here, but Epcot, I know it, it's already hell. I've seen pictures of your back check line today, and it was extremely long. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. Oh, spring <laughs> break. Spring break. That's spring break. Spring that's break. why. Spring break. Yeah. That's what it is. Yep. Yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we are currently holding for further traffic clearance. Check out Kristen's new website, MagicalJourneysVacations.com. For all your vacation needs, Disney, Universal, Cruise Lines, and more. Thank you for traveling with us. MagicalJourneysVacations.com. Have her book your magical vacation today. That's what it is. Okay. So on to the main dish. Our entree is going to be the best places to grab breakfast at Walt Disneyland and Walt Disney World. So what are some of your favorites, Bubba? Well, I made a list. I have three places that I have eaten at that are on my favorite. I also have a list of uh, one or two places that I haven't eaten that I want to try. So uh, Downtown Disney at La Brea Bakery, definitely one of my top picks. Uh, if you're not even in the park, if you're down in Anaheim, this is definitely a good place to grab breakfast. Uh, it's a They have a quick grab and a casual dining area. So if you are going into the park, you can just grab something to go take it into the park and enjoy it inside. 
side. Um, or you can dine in, have a server come to you. They have a nice table area right out, uh, right before you go into bag check. And, you know, perfect weather of the day to sit outside too. So uh, some of the items that are featured are a BELT sandwich, uh, which features two fried eggs, heirloom tomatoes, pecan smoked bacon, uh, butter lettuce, herb aioli on a grilled country white uh, table bread. And that's also served with breakfast potatoes. They have a chicken sausage Frida that I've had before. Uh, that was amazing. And my favorite, I've I've had this once or twice, the pecan stuffed French toast. And uh, that's with bananas, fresh berries, powders, mm. sugar. Maybe, yeah. No, basic, but <laughs> it's so, good. yeah, it's so good. There's also a kid's menu available for uh, La Brea Bakery inside downtown Disney. Goofy's Kitchen, You, I, I can't say, I don't know what I could say about this place. It's just amazing definitely worth the price that you are gonna pay it it makes you feel like a kid anybody of the even me i mean i feel like a kid all the time but with this <laughs> you know this this will definitely like you know make your trip uh you know worthwhile they have made to order omelets carving stations uh mickey shaped waffles a signature peanut butter and jelly pizza uh, that's made, good yeah uh that's one of their top uh top uh, things at that uh, brunch and then not only that the characters come and they say hi to you you got uh, goofy jasmine aladdin chippendale mad hatter they all stop by your table they bring out kids to dance in the middle of the floor and uh it's one of my picks if you are gonna go make a reservation that is highly recommended and my top place for breakfast and i've always said it carnation cafe inside uh, disneyland on main street usa it's a table side service and you will you always have a tr- Treat when Chef Oscar is working because he sits down with you and he talks to you and you could ask him about, but you know, past the, you know, working with Walt and uh, cooking for Walt. It's, he's an amazing guy and he has great stories, but not only that, the food is amazing too. Um, ever since they did the refurbishment outside, it's been one of the top places for breakfast. Uh, some of the items that are featured, there are the country fried steak and eggs, uh, the apple granola pancakes, and my favorite, the Oscar choice, all American breakfast which is two eggs with uh, breakfast potatoes, bacon, sausage, and your choice of toast. It's like, it's the basic breakfast, but it's so good and it's so filling. And uh, Kids Menu is available also at that location and reservations are highly recommended for uh, Carnation Cafe. But like I said, sit down with Oscar. He'll he'll tell you stories that'll just, you know, if you love the Disney history, and you're going to love uh, hearing his stories. Some of the places, oh, go ahead. That's somebody else that we need to get an interview with. He's very, um, he doesn't really do interviews. I know that because I talked to another friend of mine and, um, you know, they people have offered to, wanted to talk to him, but he's always said, no, he's a very soft-spoken gentleman. Um, you know, he does kind of talk soft when you do talk to him, so listen carefully. But uh, he he's very, you know, he's just, he focuses on the guest at the restaurant. He's not into, you know, talking to other people, you know, because I wanted to talk to him before. I said, we would love to have you on the show. Um, I think I told him that years ago when for uh, Sorcerer Radio and he's like, no, I don't do stuff like that. Uh, you know, he just, like he said, he just, he's kind of like the face of the park now uh, when it comes to uh, dining at Carnation Cafe. And, uh, you know, he told me that he doesn't, re- I don't really do anything except greet the people and, uh, you know, help with the menu, which is, you know, fine. Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, he's Especially been there for when he's been there that long. 50 Yeah, he's been there 50 54 years at the park or actually longer, I believe. So, make sure you uh go to Carnation Cafe, uh make a reservation there. So, the two places I'm wanting to visit for breakfast is uh one just opened up, started I didn't open up, but just started serving breakfast and that's Rancho del Zocalo. They started serving breakfast about 2 months ago once uh Thunder Ranch closed. They moved some of the barbecue items to River Bell Terrace and they served the breakfast there, but then they decided to move some of the breakfast, uh, the breakfast from there to Rancho del Zocalo. And I'm hearing a lot of great things about the breakfast. Uh, they have the Mickey pancakes They that are so famous in the park. Everybody loves those. Uh, two of my favorite things that I'm going to try, the chilaquiles, which is uh, oh. layered, yes, corn tortillas, refried beans, scrambled eggs, and a green sauce garnish with queso fresco, sour cream, and onions, and cilantro. Also, they'll have a fajita beef breakfast platter. Scrambled eggs, beef, uh, fajitas, beans, rice, and tortillas. They also have um, 
tamales for breakfast, uh, chorizo and eggs. So it's definitely a good spot if you want to grab, you know, some spiciness to your breakfast. Uh, so go try Rancho Del Zocalo. But another place is Steakhouse 55. Another great place I've been hearing a lot of good things about for um, for breakfast. And it doesn't hurt your pocket that much, which is what's so great about it. Uh, the menu ranges from $9 to $20 uh, for Oh, items. that's not bad at all. No, Especially for bad. Steakhouse 55. Yeah, the, the most expensive thing is $20, and that's the steak and eggs. And um, everything, that was the only thing that was $20. Everything else was priced lower. So you, you have a lot of choices, too. They have everything from biscuits and gravy and all-American breakfast, eggs benedict. You name it, they have it. And, um, you know, they have cappuccino lattes they have a kids breakfast menu also you know if you want to get the mickey shaped waffles or anything like that so uh steakhouse that is another place that you want to get reservations also so when i go to the park next time i'm definitely going to make a reservation for steakhouse 55 and so what's great about all the places that i did mention for my breakfast uh breakfast picks they all accept annual pass holder discounts which nice. uh you get, yeah uh, depending on the pass you have you get a uh, 15 off your dining experience yeah, that's not bad at all. No. So let's see. When it comes to my list, oh, there's so many places to choose from. <laughs> I bet. So for Magic Kingdom, I'm going to go with probably Cinderella's Royal Table because you can sit down and and get things like shrimp and grits. They've got um, that has Tillamook cheese. Tillamook cheese grits, poached egg, and dewy sausage, and a lemon butter sauce. And I love shrimp and grits, mm. so I'm a little kind of leaning towards that. You like the Cajunness of it? Cajun oh, I do. I love Cajun food. I worked Less. in a New Orleans restaurant for a while, and oh, just got yeah. got so hooked on the, on the food. The last restaurant I managed, we had shrimp and grits. I I didn't try it at all, but everybody said it was the bomb. <laughs> oh, I love that's one of, that's one of my specialties that I make are shrimp and grits. Mm. Nice. Um, they have a caramel apple stuffed french toast that has a sweet cream cheese baked with caramel apples and drizzled with a caramel sauce mm. uh, for those looking for something healthy they do have that as well there's a hard poached egg it's served on a bed of arugula tossed with quinoa avocado roast vegetables a little bit of spritz of the meyer lemon oil and a white balsamic vinegar so there's some healthy menu items as well and i like to kind of do a little bit i always say go one way or the other either get there early and that way you can see the park with nobody in it and have a good chance of getting a picture of only the castle without you know yeah. 300 people in your photo <laughs> or do it later and that way you're it's kind of you know you do a late breakfast and you're kind of full and that way you don't have to to worry about like a big lunch or anything like that so that's another another way that i like to do do that now over at epcot my, one of my favorites is sunshine seats it's a quick service place but they have nice breakfast items that you can get both hot and cold their bakery has a lot of nice options for croissants and muffins and things like that if you're looking for a smaller bite of food so that's one of my favorite places to go and general at Epcot. It is one of my probably my favorite quick service location there just because they offer such a wide range of food and it's, it's good. Mm. Um, Tusker House or um, Ocker Shoes Royal Banquet Hall. That's going to be another one that um, there's going to be some unusual menu items because it is in the Norway Pavilion. So you will have uh, smoked salmon. There's going to be sliced cheeses like uh, Jarlsberg cheese. They're going to have things like um, cured olives and um, they used to have herring. I don't know if they're still, they're still going to have that on there. Uh, I do know they have the mackerel still and pickles like gherkins and things like that are going to be on there. Um, but they do have your traditional things. So sausage, bacon, eggs and potato casserole. So it gives you a little bit of variety of your traditional American breakfast, but giving you uh, the experience of what a Scandinavian uh, breakfast is like specifically uh norway but norway sweden finland they uh, share a lot of the same type of um because they are in the water share a lot of the same type of food when it comes to things like fish and, and that kind of stuff for breakfast and i've actually had breakfast in finland and it was a lot like they have a lot of herring all kinds of varieties like oh this one is flavored this way and that way and Ooh, so, i've never had that 
definitely interesting. Um, not not definitely a place you would want if you were an extremely picky eater. But like I said, with with uh, Acker Shoes, they do have your traditional American dishes as well. There's nothing that really stands out over at Hollywood Studios for me. Often when I go there, we do breakfast at, the, at a resort and then hop over there. But they do have uh, breakfast over at Hollywood and Vine. It's a buffet and it's going to have more of your, you know, it's, it's going to be traditional American fare, but buffet style. Over at Animal Kingdom, my favorite place to go for breakfast is Tusker House. And they have beef uh, boba tie. There's potato and leek frittata. They have rice with lemon, cinnamon, and cardamom. It's going to have that those, those uh, African spices to it. Mickey waffles. So you don't have to worry about that if you love <laughs> Mickey waffles. There's a spiced corned beef hash with cornbread topping. They're going to also have things like oatmeal and biscuits and granola um fruit loops if you need some cereal for your kids you don't have to worry about <laughs> being too picky banana bread coffee cake they've got strawberry turnover and this i'm also going to go with another place because the menus for both husker house and Bo boma flavors of africa which is over at disney's animal kingdom they were both created by the same <laughs> same staff so they have very similar menus like the corned beef hash and and cornbread topping is also over at boma so i'm gonna say if that's your what you like boma and tusker house are excellent places Boma might be my favorite place to have breakfast. It's just so good. So much variety. Like I said, everything that has that African Indian spices to your American stuff of scrambled eggs and bacon and sausage. So you, it, it's good when you have a family, say one person in your family is very, very adventurous and the, you know, everybody else is either <laughs> picky or kind of middle of the road. It's an excellent choice because you can leave all and have a wide variety of food and be a picky eater or you can be an adventure seater and still have a lot to choose from and get some unique menu items as well. So yeah. I highly recommend that for families that have both adventurous and picky eaters. It, it's something to make everybody in their family happy then. Uh, let's see. What else for breakfast? Um, I said Boma. Oh, over at the Polynesian Village. Cannot forget to mention this. <laughs> Kona Cafe. Tongo Toast. The cinnamon toast stuffed with bananas. Oh, Can't miss that. It oh. is a fan favorite. That Everybody loves it. And if you can't get a reservation at Kona, you can go over to their quick service place, Captain Cook's. And they serve it there for breakfast as well. So that's a little tip. If you can't get into Kona, but you are really craving that Tonga toast, you can go to Captain Cook's. Uh, Oscars. This is not at a Walt Disney World Resort. This is actually in, uh, within the gates, so you can easily get there. But uh, Oscars over at Waldorf Astoria, I believe it's $35 for their buffet. But they make to order pancakes and crepes, um, omelets they have. There's meats and cheeses like they've got fresh cut prosciutto there they make all their own juices so there's normally like five six different kinds of juices on hand that you can have uh made in house but it's and they also have an a la carte menu so if you're not overly hungry and don't want to do the buffet you can then do a la carte menu and that's fantastic as well i've had breakfast there i think it's four four or five times now but it's it's an awesome place to enjoy a nice meal and of course because it's at a resort it's not going to be as hectic as it might be um at some of the some of the parks in the morning mm. um one place that is busy for breakfast but is really good and it's great for kids is chef mickey's because you get to see mickey and minnie and donald like in all of their kitchen attires they come out and they meet meet and greet the guests you can get pictures and you know autographs and all that kind of good stuff and it's gonna be your your traditional american buffet so it's not anything that you know anything strange you're not gonna find anything really weird on the menu um the last time I was there for breakfast, they did have the ice cream machine still going so you could get some soft serve ice cream and make Sundays for breakfast <laughs> in case that's your that's your that's thing. Your thing but yeah. 
<laughs> uh, let it be. <laughs> but those are just some of some of my favorites um, and some of Bubba's favorites. Bubba, you're right about like you you named two of my favorites and yeah. that's Goofy's Kitchen and, and Carnation Cafe. Oh. To me, those are those are must do's. Like if you, it's your first trip and you're going to have breakfast, you have to do one or the other. You yes. can't like you can't miss. You have to try those. One. What, those. Those are staples when it comes to Disneyland and uh, Absolutely. Know, definitely two of my favorites. Some I didn't mention that I'm going to try again is Flo's Cafe inside Disney California. I did not have a great experience last time I had breakfast there. So I'm hoping I had the bread pudding and I know it's supposed to be runny, but this was like soup and uh, it, yeah, it wasn't good at all. And uh, um, yeah, that and uh, Minnie's uh, character breakfast uh, inside the Plaza Inn at Disney at Disneyland. That's also another great place. Uh, character dining, everything that you want from Goofy's Kitchen, uh, but you're inside the park and uh, you know another great spot to take the kids. You know what I liked that I had the one time was over at uh, Cozy Cones. I had Cozy one of the nice. breakfast cones. Those yeah, the chili, good. yeah, the chili. Um, I don't know if they yes. have breakfast. Uh, but I know they have chili verde. Uh, they have the uh, and the chili cone. Um, and my wife's favorite, the mac and cheese cone, which is mac and cheese and bacon bits on top. And I haven't in- tried that one. Oh yeah, it's it's delish, very delish. They they only brought it. They brought it here for like a month or two, and it they kept it by popular demand because it was one of the top sellers. That's good. Yeah. You can't go wrong with mac and cheese. No. I mean, I would say like 95% of people like mac and cheese. Especially Disneyland's mac and cheese. We always buy a bag of it. We have two bags in our cupboard right now of Mickey Roni and cheese. (laughs) Yes. That's one of Taylor's favorite things to eat. I'm going to have to buy some next time. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. So on to dessert. What is your dining tip? Well, since it is spring, spring's a big mating time when it comes to animals. So we're going to talk about birthdays. So if you are celebrating, it's mating season for the animals. Season. <laughs> if you watch Bambi, if you watch Bambi, you know it's mating season. So we're going to talk about birthdays. If you are celebrating a birthday in the park, make sure, first of all, you grab a button um, from City Hall or any uh, of the stores or restaurants that you walk by. There's they're sure to have them and they will write your name on there. Maybe something clever. And if you do dine inside one of the restaurants, always mention to either the host or the server that you are celebrating a birthday or an anniversary and you will get most likely get a free dessert, uh, which is great. You know, everything you love. If you love free stuff at Disneyland, this is something that you're going to definitely want to do. So I know a blue Bayou. you. If you go for your birthday and you are celebrating a birthday, they bring you a Mickey Mouse shaped chocolate mousse. Um, for you to enjoy. What's also good is that you can actually order a cake, I just found out, for your birthday. If you call ahead, you know, make a reservation, you can talk to uh, one of the uh, Disney dining people, mention that, you know what, I'd like to purchase a cake too. And you can order a cake, either like a six inch round, a 10 inch round, Mickey shaped head. It all depends on price. And they will have the cake ready for you when you go and dine at whatever restaurant you decide to do. And so that's also, a, I've seen some of the pictures of what they do. The uh, I know there's like a starting price of $50 for one of the six inch rounds. And then they go up depending on what kind of style you want, what you want on the cake. But it's it's a good, um, you know, if you have that, if you want to spend that money to make somebody's birthday amazing by having a Disney pastry chef bake your cake, that's something that you should definitely look into. I'm, I might want to look into this one time. Uh, if Taylor's watching this, she'll probably know now. So, <laughs> you know, to, uh, <laughs> if we go to do this, because some of the cakes did look great on um, that I've seen online. So when you do go to the park, mention it's your birthday. I know they do something at Blue Bayou, um, Orleans Cafe, Carte Circle, um, and uh, I'm sure some of the restaurants that are um, around the resort too, inside the hotels. So birthday, 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 get that free dessert that you so deserve. <laughs> and you can have it noted on your reservation as well, making yes, it you even can. easier for them to, to do that ahead of time. They should ask you. They usually ask you, are you celebrating anything? And um, that's when you tell, uh, when you make your reservation to a uh, oh, birthday or anniversary. If you do happen to forget, when you do check in, talk to the host and let them know we're celebrating a birthday or anniversary or just celebrating whatever. I like that. That's a good tip. Yeah. Now mine, it kind of will tie in with, because since we were talking about great place to have breakfast and I mentioned some of the resorts, uh, it kind of ties in with that. And it's to try 
the Disney resorts for meals. There are a lot of great places outside the four park that offer fantastic food. And one of the nice things is, say you're going to Magic Kingdom for the day. You can park at the transportation and ticket center where you're going to have to park if you're going to Magic Kingdom. But they have two monorails. The one monorail is your direct line straight to uh, the park. Your other one hits the three resorts on the monorail. You've got Contemporary Resort, Polynesian Village Resort, and Grand Floridian. So you can hop on one of those and have breakfast, lunch, whatever at that. It's it's very easy when it comes to Magic Kingdom. It's so convenient to just even if you're you're at the park and you want to leave for lunch or dinner, you know, it's it's nice and convenient and it gets you kind of out of that crazy park atmosphere, which Every, all the time, the parks are getting busier and busier. And yeah. so it's a, it's a kind of nice es- escape from that. And like I said, Magic Kingdom, very convenient. Um, Epcot is the same way. You can actually, the Epcot Resort Hotels are located right outside the gates of the World Show uh, Showcase entrance there. So you've got Yacht and Beach Club, Swan and Dolphin, as well as Boardwalk Inn and Villas. And you can either walk to that or the ferries right there at the gate. Just hop on one of the ferries and they'll take you to any of those. Same with the studios. It goes to studios as well. So it's a, an easy way to get in and out of the park there without much of a hassle. Um, so that's that's my tip. Try some of the re- meals at the resorts because they do offer some really fantastic food. Anything else today, Bubba? Uh, no, I'm a little bit depressed that 24 hour day will not be happening. I know. So, I'm kind of surprised they didn't do that again. Yeah. So, um, well, I've, I read a lot of the, you know, reasons why they won't have it. I don't know if they're true or not, but some of them seem pretty reasonable, but I don't see why they couldn't do it. That was the one event I love doing for Sorcerer Radio. And, um, you know, I'll next year. Or maybe sometime this year, they might do it another day. Who knows? But uh, a little bummed out they're not going to have it. But hopefully the Food and Wine Festival will cheer me up with <laughs> I can't wait to see all the pictures you're going to be sending me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm going to try to take as many as I can when I go. As many. So, yeah, like I said, follow me on Instagram. Follow me on Twitter. Uh, big underscore Bubba underscore B. Or um, I'll tag everything with Dining at Disney. Hashtag or the actual, if you know. Uh, Whatever they you know, have. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, tag it. Yeah, do uh, yeah, do do dining at Disney as well. And we'll, do, we'll, make, we'll make a ha- we'll make a hashtag. We'll make we'll make a hashtag for everybody so that way they can just because we've done it for the twenty four hour day. So maybe we'll do dining at Disney, food and wine. Who knows? <laughs> and we will like eventually post the contest. <laughs> <laughs> no, we didn't. Um, like, oh, I did. I didn't mention this. I didn't mention this. Um, I, it was in my notes, but um, I know some of you are going to the food and wine festival. If um, we want p- you to post pictures, you know, even at the place Places we've eaten breakfast. Anybody who posts pictures or posts little reviews on the Dining at Disney website or the Facebook page, uh, we will enter you in a drawing. You know, that got is a lot perfect. Of, that is perfect. So that's that's what I was going to discuss with you. So um, look, sounds good. It sounds like we're going to do that because, like I said, I got a lot of stuff. I just have a bunch of these Disney. Uh, cards right here to make uh the croissant salad or the uh whoopie pie that you can get at jolly holiday we have a bunch of stuff i know you said you have a bunch of stuff to give away too so that's what i think that's set in stone or that we'll do that's how we'll give stuff away starting today <laughs> and then then the other thing so that the, those who visit walt disney world don't feel left out no. if they go to the flower and garden festival and do the outdoor kitchens they can do the same thing yeah so actually perfect. let's yeah. use let's use to make it easy and take up less characters on on Twitter and Instagram, <laughs> let's do hashtag D A D P. So dining at Disney podcast. Okay, that sounds hashtag good. D A D P. That'll be yep. worldwide trending in a few weeks. <laughs> that would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> that would be great, wouldn't it? Right yes. under Jimmy Fallon's tweets, we'll be right there underneath them. <laughs> that would be crazy. That would be absolutely <laughs> crazy. Um, as far as dining at Disney, you can find us at diningatdisney.com. You can follow us on twitter facebook instagram pinterest and periscope as well as youtube on youtube it's the dining and you can watch bubba and i do these these shows uh 
So yeah, you can check that out at, at YouTube. And then um, one other thing is Bubba and I were very lucky. And John, who is WD Park Hoppers, he has a show called Table for Four that he does on Wednesday nights. And we were uh, lucky enough to be on episode six, discussing a whole, a whole bunch of stuff with people from uh, Plantoon. So yeah. you can check that out in the show. Uh, we will have the link for that if you'd like to, to download that and and listen to us discuss that as well. That was so much um, fun. I liked doing that. Was that was fun? I love John. He yeah. he, he is such a great guy. He, he is. is so cool. Um, but we are part of the We Be Geeks Network, so you can check us out there and their website as well, and download and subscribe to us on iTunes. Give us that five star rating and a review. We would love for you to do that, and we really appreciate uh, those of you that have put reviews and stuff on there. We it you know even if you write hey. We've got one on there that discussed a, a, some of our sound issues, but you know what? We're working on it. So, you know, yes, we we, and you can email us at podcast at dining at disney.com too. If you have a question, something you'd like for us to talk about, I mean, that's how we got today's topic. It was recommended, hey, tell us the best place to grab breakfast. So, here you go. You got it. Uh, yeah, just email us podcast at dining at disney.com. So, and thanks so much for listening. Until next time, bon appetit. This podcast is not affiliated with the Walt Disney Company or its holdings and is intended for entertainment purposes.